Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to take a trip down memory lane and talk about the history of C-Sharp a bit, what Microsoft had at the time releasing every one of those versions all the way to 9 and then try to see what's in preview for 10 and what is coming in .NET 6 and try to understand and talk about where the C-Sharp language and the .NET framework is going because I think it's very very interesting and I'm very curious to see if Microsoft will actually pull it off if it is what I think it is. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So I'm going to try to breeze through the first versions all the way to 6. Um, and with version 1.0, you have the basic foundations for an object-oriented language. Uh, there's no link, there's no way to sync, there's just classes, structs, interfaces, all the building blocks. And there is no hiding behind the fact that Microsoft was trying to create a viable alternative to Java, but for Windows. Um, obviously at the time it was not cross-platform, you could only use it in Windows, so that kind of sucks, but at the time with their business model it did actually make sense, so can you blame them? And then 1.2 was just building on top of the basic feature set. With 2.0, right at the get-go, we'd get generic support, and that is like proper generic support, it's not like the Java generic support, which you only have the constraints in compile time, and then Type or Azure just ditches them when the thing actually runs and it doesn't really matter. And you have things like iterators, nullable value types. Again, we're still building the language at this time. And version three would bring some amazing features like auto-implemented properties, anonymous types. Link would be introduced with all the expression, goodness, lambda, query. Like link takes a lot of flack for being a slow and memory hungry feature, but like the flexibility it brings and what you can do with it is just insane and how you can extend it to basically make anything you want out of it, not just simple list iteration and filtering. So very influential feature. Extension methods, which like when I started C Sharp coming from Java and I saw that they had extension methods, like, and I wrapped my head around the concept, it is very simple in principle, but just being able to extend anything with a method was just insane to me. And then all the things like partial objects, like basic stuff, nothing fancy here. Then C Sharp 4 is a version I don't really want to talk about because I don't really like it. Dynamic was introduced at the time and it's pretty flexible nowadays with things like Dapper and JSON contracts. But at the time, it was introduced to allow basically two things. Com interrupt, mainly with Office, and allow you to do things like Iron Python, which for some reason that was supposed to be the craze at the time. I don't know. I wasn't working C Sharp, which would basically allow you to run Python and use Python from C Sharp and then the Python result and the methods would be able to be called by Dynamic. It's like, it's a weird thing. I do have a video on Dynamic where I show this. If you've never seen it, it might be interesting. So you might want to check that out. And then name an optional arguments, which is pretty nice. Some people don't like it. I personally like it because I, I'd rather use that than have like a million overloads for any edge case. Um, there are pros and cons and you maybe don't want to abuse it, but overall pretty good um, feature. And then you have five where await async is being introduced. Now, this is my favorite release just because of await async, but Microsoft has admitted that if they could, they would have named some things differently. Um, and the reason why I say that is because 10 years later, people still get await async wrong and they don't fully understand it. Uh, the documentation is way, way, way better now for C Sharp and this feature than it was at the time, but still people do get it wrong because they learn it from people who know it wrong. And it wasn't a new concept. Don't think that Microsoft was the first one to like have the idea of a result and continuation, which is basically what the feature is built upon. Um, this dates all the way back to like a Haskell paper all the way to 1999. And then F Sharp in like 2007 would have asynchronous workflows. And then in 2011, C Sharp would have asynchronous members, so away they sync. And it would influence many, many languages that are still in development. I'm looking at you, Java, to actually properly implement an away they sync mechanism where you can write code that looks synchronous but acts asynchronously and would make everyone's life easier and everyone's application more scalable. Then in C Sharp 6, which is when I started writing uh, C Sharp actually, you have things like auto property initializers, expression bodied members, like amazing features that would begin a trend for Microsoft, which is the more for less. You get more with less code. It was basically this idea of trimming fat when you can and provide a better experience for the developer. 
And things like string interpolation also speak volumes for that because you would normally have to do like concatenations and plus symbols and string dot format if you want to, but no, they would introduce string interpolation, which again, wasn't a new concept, but many languages until now don't support it. I'm looking at Vue Java. And the interesting thing about string interpolation is that it would also show another quality of Microsoft, which is it gives you an amazing API right out of the box. Like using string interpolation is pretty well designed and maybe it's not as performant as it potentially could be or as efficient. And the API stays the same. They change the implementation behind the scenes. They don't break anything and they make it more efficient. So as you upgrade, your code becomes better and faster just because, which is awesome. And then a bunch of other features, nothing super amazing. And C Sharp 7 would begin what I think is the three core pillars that C Sharp now is kind of being designed around, which is functional elements, more for less, and performance. Like those three things are the things I see in performance in the form of speed or memory allocations usually. So things like tuples, pattern matching, local functions, those are fundamentally functional elements and functional ideas. And then things like ref locals and returns would allow you to solve the problem of passing down a value type being expensive, but getting a reference to that value type is actually cheap. I won't dive too much into it because I do have a video on that. But yeah, these are the three main categories that I would like to essentially categorize uh, every c -sharp version actually after this. And then you have 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, which are all building on top of those core principles of seven and would make John Skid's life very, very hard when he's trying to write a book about the language. And then c -sharp 8, in no one's surprise, more functional elements, more for less, more for less, asynchronous streams, which is awesome. SDKs should be using that if they can, like things like the Cosmos DB SDK, the SQL Server SDK allows you to asynchronously query a stream and get results back as the thing is actually spitting them out. Like such a good feature. And I think it's actually being underutilized. And you know what other is like the most important feature of this whole release? And I think it's being very underutilized. Nullable reference types. I think the fact that C Sharp got this so, so late um, actually harmed the adoption of this feature. And like, if you're coming from a language like Kotlin, where this thing is actually the default and you have to explicitly make something nullable, um, then it's way easier to adopt. But C Sharp engineers were just used to writing C Sharp in a specific type of way. So it's very hard to just ditch your old habits and explicitly enable a feature that to a degree limits you for your benefit, but you might not see it. Awesome feature. Sad that more people are not using it. Uh, yeah. So C Sharp 9 follows the same trend. Functional elements, more for less performance. And you have records, more for less. Init only setters, top level statements, more for less. Pattern matching enhancements, functional uh, performance and interrupt. They even call it performance and interrupt. So performance stuff, um, some improvements on the language and code generators, which I think refers to source generators. And C Sharp 9 would actually make it more clear to basically everybody that Microsoft is also heavily developing C Sharp for themselves, not just us, because they're using it. Like they're building a lot of stuff with it and they need to be blazing hot, blazing fast. And source generators will allow to make multiple things in the Microsoft ecosystem super, super fast. And that's why the API currently for source generators kind of sucks because they can use it. They're happy with how it is. It can allow them to build what they want. They will also make it better as the time goes by. But yeah, this is basically a feature mostly for them. You can use it, but it's not there yet. And then C Sharp 10 built again on the language. We've seen a few of the things, but C Sharp 10 more than any other language is trying to do something. And .NET 6, by the way, is trying to do something that I think is so interesting. I don't know if I necessarily think it will succeed and I will explain why, but with C Sharp 10 and .NET 6, Microsoft is actively trying to make the learning curve for C Sharp and the entry point way, way less steep because currently to learn C Sharp, like these features from seven to nine, the way you read C Sharp can be fundamentally different if you actually use all those features. And why do I say that Microsoft is trying to make the learning curve uh, less steep? Well, a healthy language needs a constant stream of people that are picking it up. If you only have us, we're already in the language and we probably got introduced because 
someone introduced us to it through work mostly you didn't just pick up c sharp to like make your blog or whatever you're probably gonna go with python or javascript for that um then how is the language going to be sustainable long term um talent needs to come in and microsoft wants to make that easy so what do they do well you might have seen david fowler and the whole dotnet team to push heavily for something like this where they're talking about how you can actually make a full dotnet api with just these lines where you have the builder the app some configuration like very basic stuff for the environment and then boom map get this lambda expression get a response back now you look at this and you're like i wouldn't use that like i need a proper structure yeah the thing is this is not for you and me like initially i was like why are they allocating resources to do this but then thinking about it like of course they need people to be able to see this and be like oh this is like express oh that was so easy in node it's so easy in c sharp as well i'm gonna pick up c sharp like we need this as an ecosystem we need people to be able to understand that c sharp is not so hard to get into like that being said if you got introduced in c sharp with this and your next step is like all the ddd cqrs clean architecture fluff that you see going around and by the way i'm guilty of it as well then you're probably gonna get a bit discouraged so i think that middle step needs refinement after that and i really want to know what you think about this like do you think that spending time building this is good for us now the interesting thing about it is that in order to be able to do this they had to do improvements in lambdas type inference like uh, thing, like the language is better for this thing being implemented and i'm very happy for that because i know that i'm going to use this syntax like a lot i write mostly functional c-sharp personally now would i use this minimal api feature personally in reality no because the truth is if i want to do something that is that simple nine times out of ten i'm gonna go with a lambda like a nasru function and, or an aws lambda instead of just running a fully fledged api that i have to manage and deploy so in that sense for me it doesn't make sense but i want to know what your thoughts are like would you want to see a different feature in c sharp i know personally i want to see discriminated unions you know the one of things that i show time and time again i want to see built-in support for it natively and i think at some point maybe 11 or 12 I might actually be able to get it but i'm curious to know what you think now before i close this video i want to say that with dotnet 6 being an lts i highly suggest you try the preview out you see what works what doesn't you give feedback back to microsoft because ultimately they're trying to make the best framework and language we can use as developers so they can use all the feedback they can get that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this videos possible if you want to support me as well you're gonna find the link in the description down below Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.